church. Welcome. Let's get started with some worship. Come on in. Let's put our hands together this morning. Amen. 
Cross the bears, the birds. 
sing a new song this morning. We're going to start in the chorus that says, One moment in your presence. Just one moment in your presence. And everything changes. I don't know what kind of week you had. I don't know how you feel going into the Christmas season. I don't know what your family life looks like. What your work life looks like. But God is here in just one moment in his presence and everything can change so will you sing that with me let's sing that chorus one moment
together, there was immaculate attention to detail. Every measurement, every corner, every inch, every dimension was meticulously recorded and planned. And that is what the Lord is doing in our lives in this day. We are not caught into a thing that is so big that we don't matter. The Lord has a plan a purpose the Lord has a design he is a grand architect not just of what happens in this the world but what happens in our lives and he cares about the details of our lives he is putting everything together with meticulous detail there is a fashion and a form that is going out over your life there is a detail from the beginning of time when you were first fashioned and formed the Lord spoke into life those that he desired to accomplish in you and through you. There is a reason you are walking the earth even in this very season. The Lord has his hand on you. The Lord has designed you for this time, for this purpose. Open your hearts to him. Ask him what he would have you to do. Let him breathe afresh on you. Let his presence fill you. You are the temple that he has designed. And we together are part of the grand scheme of things that he wants to do in this earth. Praise God that we have a part to play. Praise God that his hand is upon you in this hour. Praise God that he has called you by name and given you something to do in his kingdom for eternity, for a purpose. Open your hearts in this day and do not shrink back from the call of God that is on you to rise up and do his will, to rise up and do his purpose, that he may have his way in this season, that he may build a glorious church that we get to be a part of, that we get to be an accomplishment in his hand, a tool and an instrument to see all the good things that he has for us in this day. It is for you. Take hold of it. Be glad in it. Rejoice in it. Run with it. You were designed for it. Go forth. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let me respond to that word. One moment. One moment in your presence changes everything. Oh, here I am abandoned. You are all I see. Have you ever?
remember what you did when you came to earth and walked here where we live. We thank you for doing that, Lord, for laying aside your heavenly glory and clothing yourself in our human, frail bodies. Lord, that you would walk and eat and live among us. We thank you for that, Lord, and we know that because you did that, you understand our frailty and how we stand even before you today with our faults and our weaknesses and our human frailty before you, Lord. And we ask that you would touch each person, Lord, that you would touch us, that you would strengthen us, that you would give us the beautiful life that you so abundantly want to give us. We thank you for eternity, Lord. We thank you for the work that you accomplished, not just by coming to earth, but by dying for our sins. And now you reign in heaven. One day we will too. And we thank you for that promise, Lord. We thank you for that hope. And we honor you this day and in this special season. In your name we pray. Everyone said, amen. You may be seated. Good morning, church, and good morning, everyone at home. I just want to say a special hello to those of you who are at home. We do not forget you, and we're thinking of you even especially today, and we hope that you really feel the presence of the Lord filling your living room or your little home office or wherever you are watching virtually today. And We just pray that you have felt part of us here, that the Holy Spirit has touched you, ministered to you, and has strengthened you even this very Sunday. We have a great word for you today. Pastor Jeff is going to preach. Before he does, I want to show you a great little book. We have a present for you. How many of you love presents? Because it's Christmas, we love presents, yes? Well, everybody knows it's more blessed to give than receive, and we want to give you a present. And these are for you, from us, for free. Woohoo! because it's a present. This is called Starving, okay? It's a book that is not just a devotional book that you read, but this is actually a pretty intense workbook that you go through day by day for 21 days. Every January, we do a time of prayer and fasting as a body together. Our whole church does it, and we fast, we pray, we do corporate gatherings. We have a great soup and bread fellowship that um, hopefully we'll be able to do that too. We'll see. Everything is we'll see these days, right? However, one thing I do know, God is always with us. God is always moving. God is always working in us. And this is one of the ways he wants to work in us. We're going to do this as a church. When I say we're going to do this as a church, I say we are going to do this as a church. Okay? This isn't just a nice little gift to send you home with. This is something that we're doing together as Rock Point Church, all of us, every single one of us. Everybody put your finger right here and say, that means me. Yep, it means you. And you're going to thoroughly enjoy it. Some of you are thinking, oh, no, not one of those little books that I have to get my pink highlighter out and put little circles and squares and hearts and all that. No, it's way more than that. I call this a hard book, but it isn't difficult, okay? It is hard. It's going to change you. It's going to demand your attention. It's going to demand you to get into the Word. Right now, I would say this world is starving, we are hungry for the presence of God, and we need more than ever to starve ourselves of the things that are not feeding us, that are actually causing some malnutrition in our lives, bloated bellies, and we need to starve ourselves of those things and to feed and feast on the Lord, his word. And so during this time, we're also going to eat the word. We have Bible reading guides. They're going to be reading the Bible through. I know that some of you, one person even texted me a picture of their Bible reading guide all filled out almost a month ahead of time. They were done. I was so impressed in a nice way. Not impressed like, whoa, but like awesome. We're going to eat the word. We're going to starve the flesh, feed the spirit, and this January is going to be powerful in the house of the Lord. It is going to be awesome. Now, if you've got kids and you want your kids to go through this, don't take a book for them. They're going to come and get their own book. So teenagers and young adults, 
mom and dad aren't going to do this for you. You come and get your book if you want a book, and we're going to do this. So they're available after the church service today. I want you to pick one of those up. And then one other reminder just before we hear the word, the Christmas Eve candlelight service is this Thursday night, 6 o'clock p.m., 7 o'clock, one-hour service. Now we have some good news because this year, although it's uh, smaller, we just found out as of Friday, we got our little letter from the government, and the restrictions have been lifted for the numbers of gatherings. So now we have a little more room for people. So that's really good news. That being said, we are not going to have a throw our mask in the fire party quite yet. One day we will, and boy, will that be good. We are still going to make sure that we are all safe and um, take good consideration and good care, one for each other. Our chairs will still be distanced, and we'll still be wearing our face coverings, but we will have a glorious time in the presence of the Lord celebrating the birth of Jesus. I do encourage you to sign up still on our pre-registration form, which is online on our Rock Point website. Go ahead and fill that out so we know who's coming. We can set the chairs up appropriately, and it's going to be an awesome time. For those of you at home who are not coming and will not be present in person, we have a a Christmas Eve candlelight kit for you. It's got everything you could ever want in it to make a special service at home. We're going to have your candles in there. We're going to have candy bags. If you have children, you get your cookies because you won't be here for a cookie fellowship and even a little special something. So we're going to take care of all those details, make sure that we all celebrate together and have a wonderful season honoring the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ and also enjoying fellowship one with another. God bless you. Pastor Jeff. Thank you, thank you. Is that on? Test one, two. We're good? Praise the Lord. Test. Yeah, those uh, kits are with the candles for you and your kids to start a fire at home. You know, <laughs> lots of fun. Let's turn in our Bibles today. Uh, we're going to go to Matthew 2. And I just got to say a few things. Uh, hey, about the... Uh, uh, candlelight service. We're going to have special guests, and she's at the back. Uh, Abigail Olson is going to be um, <laughs> ministering, and uh, also uh, we're going to have Josh Jen. He's in the United States, <laughs> but he's going to be speaking from Bethlehem, that, which is really, really cool, and so it's gonna be, that's going to be great, and uh, I just also want to make mention, a few weeks ago, we had Destiny Rescue here. Stephen our Scott uh, Studenberg was here from representing Destiny Rescue. And uh, as a church, uh, which was a beautiful thing, uh, uh, $14,000 was given towards that ministry, which is used for rescuing uh, individuals, uh, females and males, uh, from the sex trade. And uh, the $14,000, he says, Jeff, that is an, am an amount that we can do a full rescue. We can go into a place and 13 girls will be rescued out of the sex trade. So that is just a, a beautiful thing. Let's give the Lord a hand. Yeah, that's a good one. All right, let's uh, turn in our Bibles today. Uh, my title of my message is Star of Wonder. And uh, it's going on the, the star theme this morning. And so Numbers uh, 24, 17 uh, what, it, what it says there is, I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star shall come out of Jacob. A scepter shall rise out of Israel and a batter the brow, brow of Moab and destroy all the sons of tumult. And uh, this verse here is um, Balaam. Uh, you know, the story of Balaam. He comes and he's uh, uh, asked to come and he's asked to speak a curse 
against Israel by the king Balak. And on his way, he, he, he is stopped by his donkey, where his donkey uh, pushes him against the wall, and there's an angel ready to destroy them both. And the, all of a sudden, the donkey starts talking to him and says, hey, have in all the time, years that you've had me, have I ever done this to you? And how many know you're having a long day when your donkey's talking to you, okay? But anyways, the, trying to prevent him from going, but anyways, as Balaam begins to uh, prophesy, as he sees the children of Israel who have come out of Egypt, they're in the valley, and he sees over through a mountain area and looking down on them, he begins to prophesy this, and he prophesies a, um, a messianic prophecy rather than a curse. It was a blessing, and just the, the star shall come out of Jacob in a, a picture of Jesus Christ. And then Isaiah 60, uh, verse 3, we read these words, For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles, or the nations, shall come to your light, and the kings to the brightness of your rising. There's coming a day through Jesus Christ, a new age, a new era, era that would happen, and it would just bring a, a, a glorious light to the world, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Now let's go to Matthew 2, 1 and 2 there, and the big beginning with the Christmas story. Now this is about two years, a uh, year to two years after Jesus is born, okay? He is a child at this time, okay? So in your nativity scene, I know you have your shepherds there, and you also have your wise men there at the same time, okay? Throw out that nativity scene, okay? You know, or at least throw out the wise men until July or something, and just, if you really like the wise men, you can bring them back and put them out in July, okay? But, uh, now, so here, Matthew 2, uh, 1 and 2, here's what it says. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod, King Herod, uh, Days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has born, been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. Everybody uh, just say the phrase, we have come to worship him. Okay, and also let's just wave to your neighbor. You can just speak to your neighbor, but just wave to them right now. Okay, there's a whole lot of legend uh, surrounding the wise men. First of all, that there were three of them. The Bible never says there were three of them. There were three gifts, but there weren't three of them. They're probably a entourage or a caravan uh, that they were coming into Jerusalem. It was so much that it troubled uh, Herod and also all of uh, Jerusalem uh, with them. And uh, so we see the, these men with uh, wealthy gifts, you know, they're carrying gold, they're carrying frankincense, they're carrying the myrrh, all of which are very, very expensive gifts. And so they're, they're coming in, uh, they probably got bodyguards protecting them as they, they walk in. And, um, you know, the, to say that there were three kings, there weren't, so we three kings, okay, well, first of all, there may have not been three of them. Two, it doesn't necessarily say that they were kings. I know, and you know, there, there's also Christmas specials where there was a fourth one that got lost and that we know their names. If you like that, that is fine. That is up to you, but that is just folklore, okay? That is not uh, in the, the Bible. And historically, um, historically the, the wise men are, uh, the, the word that is used here in the Greek is magi. Okay, which really were like a priestly tribe, um, a religious caste in Persia. Okay, so modern Iran uh, right now for centuries were involved with uh, math. They were involved in the sciences. They were involved in astronomy, not in demonic, occultic uh, uh, astrology, but in astronomy. But they also came there with a prophetic edge on them, and they're very godly. And it could even link back all the way to the days of Daniel, when Daniel was the head over all of the uh, magicians in the, the book of um, Daniel. So the, the Magi's, they, what they would represent would be more like uh, professors, 
Okay? So if we could uh, write a song, we'd say, hey, we, the caravan of Persian professors, we're traveling oh so far, okay? You know, it doesn't, doesn't quite have the same feel, does it? Okay? So th that's sort of what was happening uh, at this time, okay? So the, the wise men. Well, he, uh, all of a sudden we have this star, okay? Uh, and God, I want to say this. Hey, God is arranging things to bring you to the place so you are at the feet of Jesus, okay? God is arranging things to bring you to a place so you're at the feet of Jesus. You know, in the Bible, there's a number of things that are, can baffle you. How did the Red Sea split? Is Noah's Ark on Mount Ararat or on the mountains of Ararat? I would say yes. And how did Jonah survive in the great fish, you know? And then did Adam have a belly button? You know, these questions can be answered, okay? Okay, how did the star get the Magi from the east to Jerusalem? It doesn't uh, say that it led them uh, or went before them. Uh, and again, like we three kings. It only says they saw a star in the east. It came to, from Jerusalem. How did the star go before them? Uh, even in that little five-mile trek from Jerusalem to Bethlehem. You know, some say it was a comet. Some say it was a supernova. Some think it was a miraculous light. Uh, one interesting phenomenon and, uh, is in 3 BC, and I want to just uh, mention, uh, there's a YouTube video you could watch called The Star of Bethlehem Documentary, uh, Bethlehemstar.com, and you could watch that. But what it talks about uh, there is the conjunction of Jupiter, the kingly planet, in the area of the sky known as Regulus, the king, and Virgo crossing the planet pattern of Venus, the mother planet. And so you have this conjunction, this great, great conjunction of, of these planets, and they would cause a, like a Christmas star effect. And in fact, uh, tomorrow night, we have this grand, a, a, a similar grand conjunction happening on June our June, December 21st, 2020, uh, first time in 800 years, there's this great conjunction of Jupiter, the king planet, and Saturn, which means justice, which possible could create a uh, Christmas star if effect. So if you're to look, if you lived in Southern California or Phoenix or Mexico, you could probably see it. It's going to be pretty cloudy. But in the west, in the southwest cloud, just after dusk tomorrow, just when it gets dark, but an hour after uh, the, the sun has dropped, uh, you, you could see it in the, in the skies. It's the first time since 1226, and it could have like a Christmas effect. And so there we go. We probably won't see it here in Oregon just because of the clouds. Uh, but... What a lifetime experience that is, okay? But it, for, the, for the Magi, how they, they translated this in a symbolic manner. And what they saw, there is a king coming to Israel who will begin a new era. And that, that's how they translated it. That this would be the king of the Jews. And possibly... Uh, you know, you're, you're thinking, okay, what, what was the science of it? But even more important than the science of it was the who and the why. And the, the, the thing on this one, the all creation is, get, uh, declares the glory of the Lord. And the, the, it is really the who is God himself. God is putting it all together, the galaxies and the, the solar system, the nature, the creation, all of it coming together. And the, that brings us to, okay, why was it brought together? And conjunction, junction, what is your function? <laughs> you know, what is the purpose of this grand conjunction? And the conjunction is that they were guiding the Magi to the Son of God to worship him. And they were guiding them, they, no matter how, think of this, people, okay? No, ma no matter how far away you are from Jesus, God is always seeking to bring you to his son. No matter how, here they are, 500 to 1,000 miles away, and God was making a way for the nations, 
These foreign people, these foreign individuals who were not Jews, for the nations to come and worship him. That was God, God was drawing and bringing them. It, think of the nations around the world. God is seeking ways to bring them. They're, in the Muslim countries right now, there are many individuals. There's a, really a revival that is occurring right now in Iran. And many men and women are having dreams of Jesus and, 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 and pictured of the gospel being preached to them in dreams. And they're receiving Christ and then coming into a group of fellowship and being discipled. God is seeking ways to bring people to the feet of Jesus. You know, if, if you're in a situation right now and you've been distanced from God in any form or any fashion. God is seeking ways to bring you close to him. We can't forget the purpose of what God has in store. He desires for you to know him and to worship him. That is what God is doing. God is guiding people to worship him. He will exert global and universal influence. He will move the stars of the sky and the planets in the, the solar system to bring you to a place of worship. That is what the God Almighty will do. You know, Luke 2, 1 through 4, we read these words here. And it came to pass in those days... And this is the other Christmas part of the Christmas story. And this is happening probably about a, a year and a half to two years before uh, what we're reading in the Gospel of Matthew and Matthew 2. And it came to pass in those days that... Okay. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> All right. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus and all the world should be registered. This census first took place and Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone in his own city. Joseph also went up from the Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. Because he was the, of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, they're engaged, who was with child. You know, what God shows us in, in Luke 2 is he's not only moving creation around, he is moving history around. He is, he is working uh, with world history. And so... God used uh, a tax time for his, his purposes. How many know God can use tax time for his purposes? You know, he, it just happened that Mary at this time was pregnant by the, through the Holy Ghost. It just happened that Joseph was of the lineage of David. It just happened that the tax time that Dave, uh, Joseph and Mary had to go to Bethlehem which was the city of David, which was the place where the Messiah, according to Micah 5.2, had to be born. All of those things just happened. There was these convergences that happened. And I look at every one of our lives, there just are some just happened to happen. There is that, hey, there just happened to have, hey, a grandma who was praying for you or a mother who was praying for you. Hey, it just happened that that friend at work talk to you about Jesus. Hey, it just happened that your uh, neighbor uh, invited you to some church event. It just happened. And all of a sudden, God brings all of those pieces together, and he's saying, hey, I want you to know me, and I want you to worship me. And just like the uh, shepherds, now they're, they're coming to the, and his aim is the nations to worship his son. His aim is for all people from all walks of life to worship his son, that they would know him and worship him. Everybody give me an amen on that one. All right. All right, let's go to, uh, back to Matthew 2. Again, and the, the, we have the Magi's coming into Jerusalem. And in, from verse 3, we read on here. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled in all Jerusalem with him. How many know when mama's not happy? 
Nobody is happy, okay? And when it came to Herod, Herod uh, here, Herod the Great, he had killed his favorite wife, okay? And he had murdered his, like, murdered his favorite wife. She got mad at her one day and killed her. And then uh, his sons, he was worried that they were seeking too much power and authority, so he killed his oldest son and another son. Okay, just wanted to get rid of them. And then uh, he also set an order when he was going to die that he wanted some of the citizens of Jerusalem killed because he, he wanted um, people to actually mourn on his death and not throw a party. So when he died, they actually did not carry out that order. But uh, that, that's who Herod the Great was, okay? And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where Christ was to be born. So they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you shall come a ruler. And this is Micah 5 2. And who will shepherd my people Israel? That's Genesis 49 10. Then the Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them when the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child. And when you have found him, bring back word to me that I may come and worship him also. Which was a blatant lie. He had not come to worship, but he was seeking to murder him. Okay? Jesus is troubling to people who do not want to know him and worship him. The ultimate goal in life is to know him and to worship him. But we see two responses here. We see two different kinds of people. You know, we see uh, the, the people here who simply do nothing about Jesus. They are indifferent, okay? And that's the chief priests and the scribes. There's an indifference. They have a, they have a knowledge but they don't have a pursuit. They have a theoretical, but they don't have an experiential. They knew the prophecy of the Messiah out of uh, uh, Micah 5.2 would be born in Micah, but they wouldn't, even, they wouldn't even travel five miles, people, to go see. Could you imagine this? You're waiting 1,500 years. The prophetic words, the 300 messianic prophecies are coming about. And here are these chief priests. They won't even go five miles. They won't even go to St. Paul, people. To, to, to think of it. Okay, oh, hey, the king of hey, Jesus is returning, and he's going to St. Paul. Okay? No, I'm not bothered with, with that. You know, he, they were too into being the morality police that they're not interested in pursuing Jesus. They, were, they wanted to know, know the word, but they, they would do nothing. There was this sheer silence is deafening and inactivity shouts, of, shouts out at you. You know, here's the, the greatest event of all time. The, the, ex, the expectation and desire of the ages, the hope of Israel, the blessed son of David, the Messiah, the Savior, the Redeemer of the people Israel, the fulfillment of 300 prophecies. Don't bother me, okay? You know, what, what, why don't you go with, it, with the, the Magi? Just go with them. Oh, just not interested, you know? I, a number of years ago, I had a really humbling experience. I was in India a number of years ago for a conference, and there were these um, pastors from Nepal, okay, that had come to the conference to southern India. These guys would jump on a train from Nepal, four days on a train, just not, uh, not uh, nice Amtrak trains, and they're just sort of stacked in there like cattle, and they just c come to the conference four days. They sleep on marble or concrete floors all day or in the evening. They hear the word of God, which they would use for their sermons for the next year or, or two years. Okay, they listen to the messages. Then they get back onto the train, four days of travel in cattle car kind of conditions with the, the thousands of people in India, 
and they come to hear the word of the Lord. Okay, this uh, last trip to India, we were with Gary and Con and Ekdal and Karen and myself. We were traveling to a number of churches. We went to a widow's house, and on the end of that day, we were going to this one house, or one church. And these people, it was now 4 o'clock in the afternoon. They had been waiting since 8 in the morning for us to come and speak, okay? They have been waiting like 8, 10 hours to hear a message from the men and women of God. There was a, God wants to put in everyone a hunger and thirst for righteousness. That there would be in each of us a passionate pursuit of Jesus. You know, this whole thing on spiritual formation and doing the starving, um, the pursuit of Jesus for 21 days from January 8th to 28th, you know, I just want to encourage everybody, everybody online, everybody everywhere uh, to join in there. And let's go after the Lord. Let's begin seeking him and saying, Lord, hey, I, I'm in. I'm in 100%. I am pursuing you. I want to know you more. I want to, hey, I'll give up things, whether that be sugars, whether that be other kinds of diets, things, or I have to fast and pray, meditate on your word. Lord, I want to pursue you and, and just seek you. You know, and it's like some people, you know, it's, oh, hey, drive to church. You know, that's a long way away, man. That's like 10 minutes, five minutes, man. This is, you know, Sunday morning, 11 o'clock, you know, that's my time to sleep in. 11 a.m. is your time to sleep in, okay? And it's my relaxed time. You know, hey, I'm going to just I'll watch a few, few football games. You know, the weather, the drizzle, the rain. You know, it's a little cold out there. Baby, it's cold outside. You know, but God, God wants to help us to pursue Jesus, you know, he wants us to be where Jesus is. Jesus is in the midst of his people. He is walking among us. He's talking. He's speaking. He's using encouragement. He's using fellowship. He wants to strengthen each and every one of us in his presence. Let's go after God, people. Let's go after him. All right. The second kind of people who do not want to worship. Jesus is the kind who are, are those who are threatened by Jesus. And here, that's, this is Herod's story. Uh, you know, one king in this story is enough. All right? Herod didn't want anybody else taking his throne. To, to him, Jesus was a threat. You know, you are not going to sit on that throne. And I, I think that's sort of what we all wrestle with and battle with at given times in our life is we say, God, you, I do not want you to rule and reign in that area in my life. I don't want you to talk to me about my, my, my personal life, you know, my private life, those things that are those secret things in my life. Lord, I don't want you to touch those. I want to rule in those dimensions. And I remember, how many remember some of the old evangelistic skits they used to have? How many remember uh, the, the, the one they'd always do is the romance one with the clay heart? And you'd have a red clay heart, and you'd have a, a, a boy, and you'd have a girl, and you would have, the, the girl would have the heart, right? And the boy would come, and he would take the girl's clay heart, okay? The red clay heart. And then they would be talking and they'd be playing. And then the boy would drop the heart. And it would crack and collapse into a thousand pieces. And the girl would cry. And she'd have a broken heart. Okay? And then Jesus would come along and he would mend the girl's heart. And he, she would feel love from Jesus. Okay, how many remember that skit? <laughs> You, you guys really, you, you people at home, I know you've seen this one before, but uh, you guys really need to get out more, okay? Yeah, okay? All right. Okay. My next skit was one that uh, you, you, Youth with a Mission used to do, and this is, what, this is what this one was. The Youth with Mission one was called The Kingdom of Self, 
and they would have you on the throne. And it was the whole, whole basis of the skit was to get self off the throne. And it was different. Finally, Jesus is coming, and he says, will you surrender? And the person, for various reasons, wouldn't surrender to Jesus and is the kingdom of self. And in the Christian life, there comes a point where it's not my will, but it is his will be done. You know, on earth as it is in heaven, Lord, your will be done. And there needs to be a prayer in our heart where we die daily. We take up our cross. We follow Jesus. We say, God, I am going off the throne. You are taking over every compartment, every department of, of my life. Hey, my finances, my sex life, my relationships, my friendships, my marriage, all of those areas. Jesus, you reign in those areas. You, I belong to you, and I surrender my life and heart into the, in those areas. And so you have the indifference of the priest, chief priest, but then you have the indignant uh, in, the, in King Herod. And so you have this battle that, that goes on. Now, hey, I want to show you true worship, though. And that's where you get down to the, um, the Magi. And when they heard, heard the king, they departed. And behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them, which is interesting. Could have been like the pillar of cloud of fire. Till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with his mother. Child there again is like a two-year-old with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened up their treasures, they presented their gifts to him, gold, frankincense, some say gold, frankenstein, and no, frankincense, and myrrh, okay? So we, we have the wise men coming here, and, the, and what we see here is like a, what worship really is. It's like a, a chemical explosion. You have this catalyst that happens here, and it's the perfect storm, and we have these... Uh, Four areas. We have ascribing authority, displaying humility, worshiping joyfully, and giving sacrificially. And together, that is a combination on worshiping. And we have this ascribing authority where we, we come to the point where he, he is the king of the Jews. And again, I want to go back to this for every one of us. We need to come to the place. Jesus is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. If he's not Lord of all, he's Lord of nothing. It is like, Lord, I put you in charge of all of my life. I pursue you. I give you my allegiance. I follow you. You rule over all of my life. You know, the second part here is displaying humility. And we, we see them here. They come into the presence of Jesus. Imagine this for a, se a second, people. They come into the presence of Jesus and they recognize who he is. And they fall down and worship him. Like they go flat on their face. Here are these wealthy, influential people. All of a sudden, they are on their face before the king of kings, a little babe in the manger. They're, they're laying before him. Expressions in worship. Every expression in worship is a lesson in humility. When, when God challenges us, okay, people, when I, when I raise my hands to the Lord, what am I saying? I'm saying, Lord, hey, I surrender, okay? Lord, I'm yielding my life. Hey, when I kneel, hey, I'm, I'm recognizing that there's somebody greater. When I bow, I am, when, when people, they would bow in the ancient times, they were saying, 
hey, I recognize your authority. There's allegiance that is happening in my heart. I bow to your, my allegiance. When we, we bow, when we, we dance, you know, hey, well, what, what is everybody else going to think about that? No, hey, when we dance before the Lord, it's like, hey, I recognize he's over, he's sovereign over all of the situations. When I clap, there's a, a verse about Josiah. They clapped for the king. It's like honoring and recognizing his authority again. When we shout with our, with our voice, okay? What, what we're, when we're shouting, it's like, okay, I don't want to be too pronounced. But sometimes God says, hey, I want you to shout. And it's times we, we lift our, and we play instruments. All, every expression of worship is an act of humility. And God, it's not, hey, well, I just don't do that. What God is working on in every worship session, people, when we are together worshiping the Lord, what he is working in your heart and my heart, he is working in your life, humility. He's working in, hey, the breaking of our pride and our own self-will to a place where we say, God, you're number one, you're first, and I surrender, and I'm a, I'm, there's an allegiance on my heart to you, okay? And here's the next one. We worship joyfully. You know, and I, I like this one here. He not only rejoices, you know, he, re, he doesn't just rejoice with joy. He doesn't, he doesn't just rejoice with great joy. There is a rejoicing with exceedingly with great joy. They are very, 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 very happy about the king. More happy than a new car. No, more happy than possessions, more happy than a new home, more happy than a grandchild, more happy than a football game, more happy than the Christmas gift that you're about to receive this week, that there is such joy about Jesus. We're not, we're not talking about just the low hills people here. We're not talking about the foothills. We're talking about the, the grand mount, mountains like Mount Everest here. We're not talking about one scoop of ice cream, people, here. We're not talking about two scoops of ice cream. We're talking about three scoops of ice cream. That, that is the kind of joy that should be expressed in our heart when we, have, when we realize who Jesus is. And come on. Yeah, yeah. Depression is anger gone inward. Depression is anger gone inward. It's anger. It's dissatisfaction. It's unmet expectations. And in that depression, somehow we need to learn to yield that. And when things just don't go our way, Lord, I surrender that to you. Worship or joy is grace in our life dancing. It's all of a sudden, hey, the presence of Jesus is flooding my heart. It's flooding my soul. Lord, I need to release your, your presence and joy in my life. Grace dance. Let, let just marvel at the goodness of God in your life. Begin to give thanks to the Lord. Begin to rejoice of all of his goodness in your life. Don't allow those spiritual clouds that the devil wants to just sow into your heart take you down. Allow a spirit of rejoicing to flow. Lord, there's some wonderful aquifers that are coming all the way from uh, Mount Hood that are flowing underneath the ground. And those are underground rivers. And beautiful thing on our honeymoon, Karen and I, we went to a place called Anderson Island. Anderson Island is out in the Puget Sound, and uh, there's a bunch of cabins there. But they're in, on that island, in the middle of the Puget Sound, is two freshwater lakes in the middle of the Puget Sound. All around is salt water. But 
there from the aquifers that come through the cascades underneath fresh water. I tell you, we could be so sour this year. We could be so mad with everything that has happened or isn't happening. I, I know that, hey, 2020, you know, we, we got one more week, guys. We're going to make it, okay? <laughs> but, you know, th th there's also not just the 2020 things. People are going through personal things. There's some real deep personal things that we're all facing. And it's in those times I need to draw on the spring of living water in my life. I need to draw upon the Holy Spirit. I need to begin to, I, personally, I speak in tongues regularly. Lord, help me not get too heavy in my heart and spirit. When things want to try to take over in my life, God, I just really, I'm going to sing a song. I'm going to worship before the Lord. Hey, I'm going to put on, go to YouTube and get some worship songs, or I'm going to get some on my playlist, and I'm going to just begin worshiping the Lord. I'm going to speak the word of God. Hey, I'm going to take the book of Psalms, and I'm going to begin just speaking it. Lord, Lord, help the spring of water that, uh, that out of your belly, out of the inner core of your being, will flow springs of living water. Let that joy of the Holy Spirit take over your life. Not, not just joy, not just great joy, not a, exceedingly great joy. People, we are called to a three-scoop ice cream life, all right? To be filled with the presence and life of Jesus. Hey, tell your face, tell your face, yes, I am a Christian, and smile, Rejoice. Give me an amen on that one, okay? The, okay. And the last one is hey, they gave sacrificially, okay? So the gold represents the currency of kings. The frankincense represented the priestly offer. It was, incense was used in worship and, and praise, all the sacrifices. Uh, the myrrh spoke of suffering. They would, for burial of bodies, they would use myrrh, okay? As, as, so prepare, here's Jesus at his birth being prepared for his burial, okay? He was born to die. So you have three offices of Jesus being represented. You have him being gold, the king. You have the incense, the great high priest. You have the, the myrrh, the, the suffering servant, or the savior of the world. All three of them are seen. But here we have these, pa these pastors, we have these leaders, they're bringing their sacrifice to him. They are bringing their time, their talent, their treasure, all of which they are. And they're saying, God, we give you that. Lord, we are giving you, hey, our substance, we're giving you our worship, and we're giving you our you know, our honor and recognition of who you are. They are intensifiers. They demonstrate by giving up things for something greater. Let's have the musicians come. You know, all the nations will come and worship before you. You know, I rejoice in that. I rejoice in the goodness of God to our life. God invites the world to see him and worship him. He arranges uh, nature. He assembles the sky to fulfill his grand purpose. This is the great grand purpose of God in all things, that his son be known and let his son be worshiped. God's aim is that the glad praise of the world be around the sun. He is calling every one of us that we would come and we'd say, yes, Lord, I am offering myself fully, completely, totally abandoned to you with everything I have. God, I honor you. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. Everybody said, amen. amen. Let's all stand, please. Let's sing this song. The one moment in the presence of the Lord, amen. Closer and
our hands right now just in surrender to the Lord. Let's get both up there. Father, I just pray right now, Lord, we just pledge our allegiance to you, Jesus Christ. Lord, right now, you are the King of kings and Lord of lords. Lord, and as your people, Lord, we humbly come. Lord, we bow before you, Lord. Lord, we say you are our Lord. You are our King, Lord. You're our Master, Lord, and we give you our life. Lord, every area, Lord, every area. Lord, our mind, our heart, our spirit, our soul. Lord, our family, our sex life, our financial life. Lord, our social life, friendships. Lord, the battles that we face in our mind, the temptations, Lord. 
right now, Lord. We just surrender to you right now, Lord. Lord, we need your grace flowing through our hearts and lives, Lord. Lord, we give our allegiance to you. In the name of Jesus, everyone said, amen, amen. Great word today. Just a reminder as you make your way out that the offering buckets are available. You can give your tithes and offerings there, or you can go online and do that on the church website as well. Pick up your book as you go out. And also for those of you at home, you can pick up these books anytime at all during the week. We'll be here if you want to stop by and get them at the office. Between office hours, we will have them available for you as well. God bless you. Have a great week, and I hope to see many of you on Christmas Eve and enjoy the holiday time with your smaller families and friends. God bless you.